hey guys, <laughs> welcome back to my channel, it's Lauren. Today we're doing one of your guys' favorite videos and that is a makeup I'm not surprised is on sale, but instead of it being at Sephora, we're doing TJ Maxx today. I thought we could give Sephora a break, thought we could check out TJ Maxx, see what makeup is there on sale and uh, talk about why I think it's there. If you haven't seen one of these videos before, I'm gonna leave them linked down below, I'll have a card as well. And this is just where I talk about makeup that I'm not surprised is on sale for one reason or another, it's a little sassy, it's just fun. I have a lot of feelings about sale makeup in general. I think some of the positives are you can snag a deal, save some money on products you were already wanting and were potentially willing to pay full price for. I think it's great that it gives the opportunity for people who might not have as much income to try higher end brands. But I also think specifically too, talking about TJ Maxx, there are some things to be a little bit wary about when it comes to sale makeup, like how old it is. Sometimes with these kind of reselling type places like Marshalls, TJ Maxx, even sometimes with like Amazon if you're buying from third parties. I think it's really good to be cautious about potentially how old something is, if it's been tampered with, specifically at my TJ Maxx, what the? <laughs> I've seen these pristine TJ Maxx's where people go in and like, they have the newest products and it's like so clean and like, you're, you're wondering if this is like, makeup sale heaven because of how nice everything looks. You're like, that's there? Oh my gosh, NARS? Oh my gosh, this? Okay, <laughs> my TJ Maxx is effed up, okay? <laughs> And it could be the fact that it's the holidays. There were a lot of people and it was like a Tuesday night, but everything was like destroyed, okay? As I go through the products, I will show you the pictures, but holy crap, everything was just so effed up looking. It's like none of this looks appetizing at all. I'm like not surprised any of this shit is here. It really is like finding a diamond in the rough if you can find something that doesn't look like it's been opened and isn't like seven years old. Like seriously, Really what I'm trying to say is I'm just jealous that I don't have a TJ Maxx that's like beautiful. Okay, anyway, let's get into the products that I'm not surprised are on sale. These were all in the store <laughs> and I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. So first off for my products, I have the First Aid Beauty Kona Eye Stick. This originally retailed for $24. It was on sale at the store at eight. I believe this item was also on like clearance. So it's like extra, extra discounted. And the reason I'm not surprised it's on sale is because I actually had this item once. I got it as PR through Octoly a long time ago and I was really excited about it. I think the idea of a stick kind of eye moisturizer is really fast and easy. I like that kind of like girl on the go. Um, you care about your skin and you want it to feel nice but it's like not over the top. Like that's definitely my style. Seems amazing. But this specific stick was so hard. Just to even put it on your eyes, it tugged. It just wasn't it. The texture was so off. I think for what anyone would expect a stick under eye balm to be. The whole kind of shtick with this product is that it has caffeine in it to help with like under eye bags and make you look more awake. But it's just so hard to even get the product I feel like on your eye in a delicate way because it's your under eye. You don't want to be too rough with that. It just wasn't a very practical product in use after it was made, you know? Like it's a great idea but the execution was pretty poor to me at least. It also had these like really fine kind of like shimmer particles in it that I just didn't think were necessary. Like if they just made a nice moisturizing, balmy, glossy formula, you wouldn't need the sparkles. It would just be like nice and moisturized and that would give you a glow. So definitely not surprised it's there. Again, packaging, it just like everything here with like all the stickers on everything. I'm like, I get it. You need to put price tags on stuff, but like, uh, it just is not appealing to me. I love makeup and I, I think part of what I love about buying makeup is like how pretty it is and all that. I know that's not necessarily a good reason, but seeing this stuff here, I'm like, <laughs> I don't want that. No, no, I'm good. <laughs> I'm okay. Next on my list is actually something that I think is kind of a nice set. Like if I were to find this and I could figure out someone that I think would really actually use it, it wouldn't be too bad, but it's from Smashbox and it's the Ablaze Eye and Lip Set. It originally retailed for $35 and they had it on sale for $24.99. The reason I'm not surprised it's on sale is because I feel like Smashbox has just kind of fallen off as a brand, at least on social media. I want them so badly to just revamp, just start start over, do some bomb stuff. I think they have good quality products. I think it's just hard for them to stand out in this oversaturated market right now. And so in the set, you got one of the little like photo eye trios. It's one of the round ones. There was also an eyeliner and then there was a lip product as well. I think ultimately for it being like a higher end brand, this could be a good gift, but I just don't think that this is anything special enough. Like why would someone pick this out out of everything? It almost felt like it was like leftover holiday stuff from maybe last year. I honestly was just happy it wasn't beat 
up. Like, this could actually be given as a gift because of the fact that it didn't look absolutely horrible. I also feel like the price on this was still kind of expensive. It originally was $35 and it's still $25. I think this would be way better at like 17. Like that would be to me a steal. Like, oh cool. Like you could actually try some things out. There's some substantial products in there. It's still, I think $17 for a kit of stuff that's old is still kind of expensive, but I think that would be a better price. Ultimately, that one is like one of the, the better ones, I think, but still I'm not surprised to see anything Smashbox at TJ Maxx. Next on my list is something from Urban Decay, and this is the Naked Skin Shape Shifter Palette. So this is a face sculpting palette. It has powders and creams. This one happened to be in the darker of the shades. It came out with two different uh, color variations. And when I saw this, I kind of was excited because I was like, oh wow, like that's cool. It's like something Urban Decay. It's a more substantial product than just like a one-off lip product. But then I started remembering like, how old is that thing? And I remembered that there were creams in there. So I did like a quick little Google search and I saw an article kind of talking about the release of this product in April of 2017. So that means what we're in almost 2020 now. Um, it's kind of old, it's kind of an old product, so I'm not surprised to see it there. When I really sit down and, and see the timeline of when things have come out and it's not all jumbled together in my brain, I'm like, oh wow, that's kind of old. And I know products, as long as they haven't been like opened and used, you know, they have a shelf life, there are preservatives in these things to help them stay stable and last for a while, but I do think that, you know, it's getting there, right? It's, it's getting there, it's coming up on three years and then you would still hopefully have that product for however long so not surprised it's there and that's one of the things that I think it's like it's just good to have knowledge so you can make the best decision that you want to make this originally retailed for $45 and at the store it was at $19.99 another reason I'm not surprised this is on sale um, or really any type of contouring products like this as much as I think that people still contour and people still like bronze and want to sculpt the face I definitely don't think it's as big of a craze and trend as it was I mean I remember when everyone had the honest eyes a contour kit and no one uses that now no one really talks about that now just contouring isn't as big of a thing it's not the thing that like gets people into makeup nowadays so um, I'm, I'm not surprised to see that kind of making its way out I found another thing from Urban Decay this was kind of like hidden away in this like really random section it was on the end cap and it was full of just like lip products and it was disgusting and I hate saying this I really do because again it's not about TJ Maxx like I shop at TJ Maxx I like TJ Maxx I think getting a deal is awesome and I get it like I don't have anything against TJ Maxx but how this section was set up how it was maintained how people treat it it's like I am scared that all of this stuff is contaminated by people just opening it and touching it based off of the boxes oh my gosh and a lot of these products on the end cap didn't even have boxes they were just kind of like there I'm like what I don't care if it's three dollars no <laughs> no I have no idea where this has been I have no idea if someone opened this, sniffed it, put it on their lips. I don't know what's going on with any of these products. And they don't look pristine. <laughs> they look like they've been through a lot. No, thank you. Oh my gosh. Anyway, it was just a rough clearance section over there, let me tell you. And that's where I found this product from Urban Decay. This is the Vice Special Effect Lip Top Coats. This was on sale for $3. I'm not sure what they originally retailed for, but I, I'm pretty sure that I had talked about these in one of my first uh, one of these videos which was like in 2017 and they were on sale at Sephora these just did not get received well right like people just didn't really like these this was at a time when like liquid lipsticks were super in and Urban Decay came out with these things and I don't know if the marketing was just off or what but these were kind of like glittery top coats they weren't super opaque and that's what everyone wanted they wanted those like matte opaque lips they just did not do well <laughs> I definitely think we can consider them a flop of a release and so I'm not surprised it's on sale but I was surprised that oh my gosh like this is still here I'm talking about it again in a video what the heck oh my gosh so that one not surprised and then for three dollars too I'm just like just leave it let that guy go to rest moving on to some Too Faced items these are both from the 2d fruity kind of fruit collections and I was actually happy to see these I know that these aren't super old I know they like revamped it this year and they had it last year so I know that it's it's fresher as opposed to not being as fresh they had a lip gloss there in who gives a fig 
The reason I'm not surprised it's on sale is because of the color. This is the deepest color that they came out with in this lip gloss. And I just think for a lot of people, uh, these deeper lip glosses are not very practical. I think one of the amazing things about a lip gloss is it's just easy, right? You just like slap it on. And something in this color, it just doesn't look natural. And it also has the tendency to go patchy. I just feel like it's more work. It's a more fussy lip product in a way that you wouldn't traditionally think a lip gloss would be. So it's one of those ones that you're like, oh, that's a cool, oh, yeah, I get it, the shade. No one wants the shade. <laughs> or less people want the shade, right? And these are also quite sparkly lip glosses, which I think are definitely making a comeback, just lip gloss in general is. But that one specifically, I'm not surprised is there. And then the other thing from the Tutti Frutti collection was a Twinkle Twinkle Liquid Eyeshadow in Citrus Mistress. <laughs> So hard to say. This one originally was $22, it was $5.99. I love a liquid eyeshadow, I really do. I think there's such a fun way to add texture to an eye look in a way that sometimes eyeshadow can't quite do. But I will say, I feel like I'm in the minority. <laughs> I feel like I'm in the minority when it comes to liquid shadows. I know the Stila Glitter and Glows were really, really popular, but Really, anything other than that hasn't been. I believe ColourPop has discontinued the liquid shadows that they used to carry. It was just a kind of this flash in the pan moment in the community, which makes me a little sad in my heart, but I kind of get it. I mean, sometimes they can be hard to work with. Sometimes, you know, formulas are different. So I'm not surprised this one is there. And I also feel like when I looked at swatches of this, it kind of seemed a little patchy, like with the initial launch of the Twinkle Twinkle Shadows. These are ones that have like plastic glitters in them and a colored base. And this one's kind of like this orangey, warm, golden color, which is a decent color. You know, it's not like it was blue, <laughs> but I I do remember seeing them be a little bit more patchy and I think for anyone who is maybe wanting to try these because they're like the Stila ones, they just don't even give off the same look in the promo picture. So I wasn't surprised to see that one on sale. All right, next on the list, this is from Laura Geller. It's the Lash Boss Max Mascara. Okay, it's a lot. I had never seen this product before. It wasn't like I'd seen this release and, and heard bad reviews. That's not why I put this on this list. I put this on this list because my God, this mascara looks intimidating as hell. Look at it, it looks like a sex toy, like a microbe. I don't know, it looks so scary. I felt like this was one of the more clean packages in the store. Didn't look like it had been tampered with. It didn't look like people had like trampled it. It looked pretty clean um, and the price was pretty decent as well. I think it was like $4.99 for this mascara and I know it had to have probably been in the $20 realm initially. But I think this is just an example of like mascaras that are just trying to grab your attention, right? Like they'll do anything. They'll make the most insane brush. This has like a crazy pink tip, which you wouldn't even notice that, right? If you're using it because it's gonna be covered in the black mascara. But it has that kind of like spiky tip and then it also has a curved brush. Like it, it's just one of those kind of gimmicky ones. And I find a lot of the time, I just need a nice wand, right? Like like, we don't need to get crazy, we don't need to do the gimmicks, just like make my lashes look as best I can, and we're good, guys, we're good. I don't need the Lash Boss Max Mascara to do that. It just it looks intimidating. I think that's why it's on sale. And it kind of seems a little bit out of character for Laura Geller, like it seems a little bit young, and I'm not that Laura Geller can't be young. I like a lot of their products, but Something about it seems a little off their normal branding to me. Next on my list is a product from Pixi. I was kind of excited to see a Pixi product at TJ Maxx. And this was the Dolce Candy Lip Palette. It originally retailed for $24 and it was on sale for $8.99. And the reason this is on sale is because no one uses lip palettes. Like seriously, no normal consumer uses lip palettes. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Lip palettes really aren't easy to use for everyday wear. And I don't think that they're necessary if you're one person, you don't have to worry about being sanitary. If you really wanted to mix stuff, you could just like scrape a little off this lipstick, scrape a little bit off that lipstick, mix them together and while you got a you got a new color to me lip palettes are just such a pro item it just makes sense if you are putting lipstick on multiple people that you wouldn't apply it from the tube necessarily which you can sanitize but it's just an easy pro item you can mix up custom colors that makes sense that makes total sense but for the average everyday person it's too much work it's not easy there's something so quick and easy about putting a little bullet lipstick on and going about your day 
you can't put this in your purse. How are you going to touch up? Like there's absolutely no mystery as to why this is on sale. Next on my list, this is from Stila and this is one of the glitter and glows, but this is from that Mystere collection. And I think this just was not received very well. I don't know why, because honestly, the more I look at this launch, like I don't think I was that into it then, but the more I look at it, I'm like, ah, I, I like it. <laughs> These eyeshadows had a bit of a gimmick. It was like iridescent swirls mixed into the glitter and glow formula, like, and so it was supposed to be like color changing as you used it and whatnot. I think the glitter and glows still have like a cult following, uh, like the original normal line, but these ones just did not hit it out of the park. I don't think people were ready for this like fantasy, the Cirque du Soleil fantasy of this. And so they, uh, they were discontinued in. So I'm not surprised to see them at TJ Maxx because of that. But my God, I would be so scared to use this. This was not in a box. I just know someone opened it, right? Because it's something about it is a little bit intriguing. It's like kind of glittery like what is this product I would not buy it I would not buy that if you see that don't get it please don't get it and that was on sale for seven dollars it's still like even at a dollar no don't put that on your eye okay next this is from bare minerals and this was a like single eyeshadow is what I thought it was but when I got home because it was in the shade sunkissed I thought I would just google and see like what is this thing I think it's a mini blush so this probably came in a set at some point but whether it was like removed from the set at TJ Maxx or somehow was shipped to TJ Maxx as its own individual product even though it's not I don't know what's going on but this retails for $4.99 and I have no idea how much it retailed beforehand but I'm not surprised this is here this looks exactly like the stuff I expect to see at TJ Maxx honestly like it's just kind of a a loose product it just looks so bad though like it could be so much better and again I know there are TJ Maxx that do it better so what's going on why am I the one that gets the loose blush mini from a set that who knows how long ago that was made oh and then the stickers just like on it it was oh man I was like yep not surprised no no not surprised I only have two more products to talk about and the next one is from glam glow and this is the glow powder like highlighter palette this originally retailed for $42 I remember being really excited about this palette because it was something other than skincare and Glam Glow is known for the skincare and the masks that they do. And this thing at the store was beat up. I mean, it was like opened and the thing is I did not like open up the products any more than they potentially could be. I kind of wanted to like open them and see if things had been touched but I also felt like I would be perpetuating the problem and, and a part of the problem if I were to like take things out of packages and do that. I just didn't want to be a part of the problem you know so I didn't open up to see if it had actually been touched but my god I would not be surprised because this thing looked pretty beat up. It looked pretty bad. This was on sale for $20 in the store and I'm not surprised it's on sale because because one, it's a little bit off brand for Glam Glow. I know that some people were using it when it came out, I honestly had this bit of intrigue when it first came out, but it was such an expensive product, $42 for a highlighter palette from a brand that you've never seen do highlighters before is kind of like, Okay, yeah. Also with palettes like this, it's kind of tough because technically this could probably work for a wide variety of people, but not every shade would. Just one of them would work for most people. And why would you spend $42 to get one highlighter, maybe two to work for you, no matter what side of the color spectrum you're on? So that one I'm not surprised like went on sale and ended up here. Although I will say it was kind of like a throwback moment to see it on the shelf. And I wish it was just in better condition because I'm sure there's someone out there who would love it. And at the $20, would be a better price for sure to get it at um, but then it being so beat up it's kind of like unfortunate it feels like this makeup is just kind of like what where does it go from here where does it even go from here after after this like all the stuff in that side aisle where does it go I don't want to get into it because it makes me sad. Okay, and the last thing we're going to talk about is from Zoella. Zoella is a YouTuber on the platform. She's absolutely massive. And she came out with some body care products. I remember hearing just a little bit about this. I never was super into Zoella because she was kind of beauty and lifestyle at the time that I got into YouTube. And I was like full on makeup beauty. Like that's all I cared about, okay? Anyway, I believe that these types of products came out in 2017, like July of 2017. That's what my research kind of showed and I will give this some credit because I think that these products as much as they are this like influencer release type thing uh, I thought the packaging looked great and I do think that out of everything I'm talking about in this video they were the best condition they were definitely in the best condition I also thought the price was pretty decent the two like body type products that I was looking at were four dollars a piece uh, I felt like you could easily remove the sticker if you wanted to and I also think at least in my experience with like body products since I'm not like putting 
keeping them like right by my eyes or mouth or anything. Um, I don't know, the body products that I've had tend to last a pretty long time and if these haven't been opened, I think that you could definitely use them up in a time period where they'd still be good even though they came out in 2017. Holy shit, I know, that was a lot. But all those good things aside, the reason I'm not surprised these are on sale is because this is an influencer collab. And I think one of the things that I've noticed with um, any influencer who either comes out with their own products or does a collab of some sort, there's a lot of hype in those things at the moment, at release, but then I feel like things kind of go crickets. Like <laughs> if they don't bring that up on their channel again, it's kind of gonna die out, I feel like. And I think this point kind of brings me to like a bigger potential issue, at least with a collab, like an individual collab, one palette or something, they can make that in a way limited edition, make a certain amount of them. Once it sells out, it's done, move on to the next thing. That kind of makes sense to me. But when it comes to like almost having a line where you're like producing stuff and it's in a store, if you're writing on the influencer's name to promote that product, there will definitely be sales, money will be made, but I don't think that it's going to be a long-term thing if it's solely resting on the name and it's not a one, either a quality product or it's not being continuously talked about. And that's why I think if an influencer is gonna come out with their own brand, if that's something they really, really want to do, I think in a way kind of separating their name from it is probably a good idea, unless they wanna sit there and just like promote the shit out of it. But I think giving it a chance to become its own established, separate thing, having its own merits outside of just like, hey, I'm popular and famous and that's why you should buy this product, gives that company and product a chance to actually shine on its own where people who maybe don't know who that influencer is or just genuinely wanna repurchase it because they liked it and it was better than other things they've used in one way or another. I think that's one of the best ways to actually have like long term success where it's not going to be like a hey let's release this we'll get as much money as possible and then whatever doesn't sell it's fine because we're gonna make a ton of money and if that's what someone wants or she wanted I'm not even necessarily talking about Zoella at this point it's kind of just an example for like a bigger conversation then that's fine I guess that is what it is but I think that if an influencer really wants to like have a line and, and legitimize it and they have these connections and they have this money to start that up. I think that can be really, really awesome. I do think though that there are ways that you have to kind of legitimize it and it might seem almost counterproductive because you'd want to like attach your name and do all this stuff. But I think sometimes that can like cheapen the brand and make it more of a short term thing. And if you want it long term, I think it's better to go kind of the harder path and really focus in on those products. But anyway, that is the video. I really hope you enjoyed this kind of twist on my makeup. I'm not surprised it's on sale. It was kind of fun to go in store and just do something a little bit different instead of just scouring Sephora's sale page because we all know that doesn't change a ton you know let me know if you guys like this version of it maybe I can do it in the future as well I should definitely probably try to find a TJ Maxx that has a little bit more options maybe is a little bit nicer <laughs> I definitely would try a different store than the one I went to just to see if there is truly like such a difference and if I can find the promised land of TJ Maxx's, right? Anyway, let me know what you guys think. And other than that, thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, don't forget to like it. If you want to subscribe and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.